I want to welcome those online. As we get ready to open God's word, I want us to go to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3, and I pray that we have a Bible and an open heart to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to us in this message for tonight. We're going to 1 John chapter 3, 1 John chapter 3, and our subject is entitled, Anticipating Christ Appearing. Christ is already here. Anticipating His appearing, 10 signs that Christ is already here. All right? Anticipating His appearing, 10 signs that Christ is already here. Now, I know some of you want to walk out right now and say, this brother is preaching fanaticism. Matthew chapter 24 says that when you see Christ, when they say Christ is here or there, don't go. But I want us to see that Christ is already here and there are 10 signs that we can see that Christ is here. Now, let's go to 1 John chapter 3. Now, before you get alarmed, let's see context as to what I'm saying. In 1 John, the Bible speaks of practical godliness. What does it talk about? Practical godliness. In 1 John, it talks about walking in the light because God is in the light. In 1 John, it talks about God is love, therefore we are to be loving. In 1 John, it talks about walking in the truth because God is in the truth. In 1 John, it talks about keeping the commandments because God is a commandment keeper. In 1 John, it talks about being pure because Christ is pure. And in 1 John chapter 3, the Bible also says, 1 John chapter 3, that we are to uh, look for Christ to appear. And as we look at these, this, these verses in 1 John chapter 3, we're going to see that Christ, praise God, is already here. He's already in the lives of some of his people, and Christ will continually be seen in the lives of his people. And as we're talking about, again, practical godliness. Are you with me? Say amen. 1 John chapter 3, friends. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2, the Bible says, Beloved, now we are the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we sh it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that what talk to me that when he shall appear we what we shall be like him, for we shall see him what as he is. So the Bible says when he shall appear we shall be like him. So this is talking about practical godliness on how when Christ appears. This is not talking about his second coming only, but this is talking about when Christ appears in our lives, we will be like him. When Christ appears in the life of a Christian, we're going to see evidences that Christ is already here. And there are 10 signs, 10 signs in 1 John chapter 3 that let us know that as we see these signs in the lives of God's people, that Christ may already be here. As a matter of fact, hold your finger in 1 John chapter 3. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3. Now this will give us context. This will explain that verse with even more clarity and power. That this appearing is not just a second coming, but this appearing is Christ appearing in the lives of his people. This appearing is that we shall be like him. This appearing is that we become like Jesus. And Christ, praise God, is being seen and developed through the Holy Spirit in the lives of his people. And notice that it's talking about the life of Christ appearing in his people. In, first, in Colossians chapter 3. You still with me, friends? All right, friends, follow me. The Bible says, first, uh, Colossians chapter 3. Verse 1 says, if ye seek those things which are risen with Christ, if ye be then risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth, for you are dead, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. So far, all we're reading is practical godliness. Keep your affections on things above, focus on God, you are dead spiritually. Now notice what it says in the next verse. When Christ, when Christ, who is our what? Talk to me. So Christ is our life. When Christ, who is our life, shall what? Shall appear. So this is talking about the coming of Christ appearing in our lives. If that's clear, if that's clear say amen. amen. The coming of Christ appearing in our lives. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear. Because we're seeking things above. Because we have died to self. Because we put away sin. When Christ is appearing in our lives, it says, Then we shall appear with him in glory. And then verse 5, verse 6, all the way, this whole chapter is talking about how Christ appears in our life. If we die to self and focus on Christ, it says we mortify the deeds of the flesh. Are you with me so far? We're crucifying the flesh. We're walking with God. Those, these are evidences of practical godliness that Christ 
is appearing in our lives. If that's their say amen. So our subject, again, let's go to 1 John chapter 3. Our subject is, again, anticipating his appearing, 10 signs that Christ is already here. And I want to say this. God is working in the lives of his people. The Holy Spirit is working in the lives of his people. God is trying to bring people to the full measure and stature of Christ. And God, by God's grace, Christ will appear in all who are surrendering their lives to God. Christ will appear in all those who are walking with God. Christ will appear in all those who are falling in love with God, obeying his commandments, walking in his truth. Christ is going to appear. Their life is not going to be seen, but the life of Christ. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, Christ will appear in the lives of his people. Are you with me? Say amen. All right, friends. First John chapter 3. Look at this, friends. First John chapter 3. The Bible says in verse number 1, Friends, this is how we know that Christ is already working in the lives of his people. Because think about it this way, friends. Before we accepted the gospel, all of us were walking in sin and we were doing the things of the world and we did not have the full character of Christ. We had a marred character. Are you with me so far? God made Adam and Eve in his image. But after that, after sin, now we have a deformed image. Christ now needs to appear back in his people so that we have the full character of Christ. If that's good, say amen. And so now we're going to look at 10 signs that Christ is now going to appear in his people. And this is a topic tonight of practical godliness. This is a topic tonight of how to make sure that Christ is appearing in our lives. And I want to show you that as we look at these signs, you're going to see that Christ is already here. He's working in the lives of his people. And while Christ brings us to his full character, then he will appear in the clouds. Are you with me? Say amen. So he has to appear in his people first. Before he appears in the clouds. If that's your say amen. Alright. In 1 John chapter 3 verse 1. Here's one sign that Christ is appearing in the lives of his people. Oh friends. Verse 1. The Bible says. Behold. What manner of love. The Father hath bestowed upon us. That we should be called the what? Talk to me. The sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not. Because it knew not him. So the first sign we're seeing that Christ will appear in the lives of his people is that people will behold the love of God to become the sons of God. So number one, you're beholding God's love and becoming his son. Friends, listen, when, when people are in the world, they have no thought of God. They're not beholding God. They're not thinking about God. They're doing their own thing. They're selfish. They're doing their own ways. And because of that, God is not appearing in their lives. But when the Holy Spirit convicts them, Maybe through a sermon or a song. Maybe they look at their own experience and they realize, wow, God has been so good to me. And the Holy Spirit is leading them to realize, listen, there is a God. There's a God. I look at nature. There has to be a God. I look at my experiences. There has to be a God. I should have died at this time. There has to be a God. The Word is showing me there has to be a God. And now they're beholding the love of God. And through beholding the love of God, the Bible says now they become what? The sons of of God. Now God is starting to appear in the lives of those who once said and once practiced and lived and said that there is no God. Are you so far saying amen? God, God, God begins to appear in the lives of his people once they behold the love of God. Behold what manner of love the Father bestows upon us that we should be called the sons of God. God will then lead us to behold his love in the word. We start reading the word of God, but saying, wow, I've never seen this before. I've never seen Jesus like this before. I've never seen that he's my personal savior. I've never seen that that blood was for me. I've never seen the plan of salvation was for me. I never saw that the sanctuary was so practical and that it was for me. And as they start reading the word of God, they're seeing his love. Are we so far? They're seeing the love of God in the cross in Gethsemane. They're, they're seeing all this. They're beholding. And now they're becoming a child of God. Where Christ was not appearing, now Christ is appearing in their lives. Are you with me so far? They're seeing angels are protecting them every time they should have died. That God is providing for them when they had nothing. They're seeing God's love at one time when they didn't see it before. Are you with me so far? They think about their testimonies. Wow, God has been so good to me. I'm still here. I'm still breathing. I'm still alive. They think about all the times things could have happened in their life and they realize it's only God's amazing love. Are you with me so far? Say amen. They're praying. They begin to pray and meditate on God. That's evidence that God is appearing in their lives. They start singing Thanksgiving songs and find something to be thankful for. It's evidence that God is working in their lives. They're worshiping God. They look outside and they see, oh, praise God, we live in Hawaii. Look outside, they see the moon shining so bright and so dark. 
How's the moon? So look at all these beautiful stars. There has to be a loving God out there somewhere. Are you with me? Say amen. <laughs> That's evidence that God is appearing in the lives of his people. They start claiming promises and walking with God. All of this is evidence that God is doing something. Now watch this, friends. God still needs to appear more fully in their lives. But God started to appear. If that could say amen. It's like the book Steps to Christ. The first chapter is God's what? Love for man. But there's still more things to experience. We've got to experience confession and repentance and consecration and faith and acceptance and, and test of discipleship and growth in Christ and prayer and witnessing. There's so much more to experience. But Christ begins to appear in, in the lives of his people the very moment they receive and behold the love of God. If that's good, say amen. amen. Oh, friends, that's beautiful. So evidence that you are receiving Christ, that Christ is appearing in you, is that you're beholding the love of God. Amen? Yeah. Steps to Christ, ministry of healing, uh, desire of ages. These books point the life of Christ. The more you behold, behold a manner of love, you're seeing what God is doing for you so that you can become a son of God. If that's good, say amen. amen. More evidence of this. Look at verse 1 again. The Bible says, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God, then it says, therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. So the world is not experiencing that. The world is not drawing closer to God. The world doesn't know that experience. Therefore the world, God is not appearing in them. Does that make sense? But those who are beholding Christ, the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit, the plan of salvation, is appearing in their lives. Do you see that, friends? So number one, by beholding the love of God, Christ is already appearing in the lives of his people. Amen? And notice, it says, behold the love of God. They didn't change their diet. They didn't change their dress. Are you with me so far? They just behold God's love and Christ starts appearing. Are you with me so far? But that's why it says, it does not yet appear what we shall be because there's more of Christ to appear in the lives of his people. If that makes sense, say amen. So people can die in different churches and die believing God's love and be saved. Maybe they didn't experience all that Christ had to appear for them, appear in them. Are right, you so far? But there's more that Christ wants to do in appearing in the lives of his people. If that's your say amen. Oh, friends, that's beautiful. All right, 1 John chapter 3, chapter 3, verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God because we beheld his love. And it does not yet appear what we shall be because there's still some appearing that Christ is doing in our lives. Are you with me so far? What is another thing God's going to do in our lives? Look at verse number 7. I'm just going to skip down to different verses in, in, in this chapter, but we're going to stay in 1 John chapter 3 and see 10 things. So number 1 is beholding His love. You become His son. Number 2 is in 1 John chapter 3 verse 7. It says this, Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is what? Is righteous, even as what? He is righteous. So as they behold his love, they become his son, number one. Number two, now they're doing righteous things. They're living righteously. That's evidence that God now is appearing in the lives of his people. They have accepted Christ by faith. They believe in his pardon. They believe that Christ declares them righteous. And now they're living a righteous life and they're doing righteous things. Is that clear? Say amen. When Christ appears in the lives of his people, they love righteousness. They begin to love the study of God's word. They begin to love prayer, right? And Psalms 119, verse 172, the Bible says, the commandments are righteousness. They even start want to change their lives so that they're obedient to God's commandments. If that's going to say amen. That's evidence that God is appearing in the lives of his people when we're willing to walk in the ways of righteousness. When we're willing to obey his word. Are you with me? Say amen. They're, they're, they want to form a godly character. So they're singing the word of God. They're doing righteous things. Right? They're showing love and compassion upon people even when they don't deserve it. They're, as evidence, Christ is appearing in their lives. They're doing righteous things. Even when someone does them wrong, instead of retaliating, now they're forgiving. Because they understand God's love. They're doing righteous things. If that's your say amen. Where the ones they had no self-control, now the Holy Spirit is saying, listen, pull back that anger. Surrender that, that pride. They're now doing righteous things. And they're growing spiritually. If that's clear, say amen. Oh, friends, that's beautiful. So behold is love, number one. God is appearing in your life. Number two, they're doing righteous things. Number three, sign and evidence that Christ is already working in the lives of his people, that he's already appearing. Number three, you with me so far? Look at verse, 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. The Bible says, 1 John 3, verse 9. 
Whosoever is born of God does not what? Does not commit sin. So verse 9, they're born again. They're born of God. When they experience the born again experience, when their heart is being changed and their mind is being changed and they surrender to the will of God, they're being born again. Something is happening in their lives. They are becoming converted. Are you with me so far? As they look at God, they be, are now becoming changed. They're being born again. And the Bible says we must be born of the water and of the what? The Spirit. They will even make a step. You know what? I need to give my heart to Christ and get baptized. That's evidence that God is appearing in our lives. If that's good, say amen. Christ, who is our life, is appearing. It's all the work of God and the Holy Spirit. He is impressing us to give our lives over to Him. He's impressing us to turn from sin. He's the one that impresses us. You know what? Let me turn my back on the world and give my heart to Christ and do a public thing and be baptized. Born of the water and of the Holy Spirit. If that's good, say amen. Oh, they're born of God. They're born again. Their desires are changing. Their mind is changing. Their, their, their music, their, everything is changing because they're being born again. Are you with me so far? Say amen. amen. Verse number 9. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. So the more he's born again, he wants to maintain this born again experience. And he's not living, not choosing, not choosing. I want to emphasize choosing. All right? Not choosing a life of sin. Are you with me? Say amen. amen. All right? Number 4. Evidence that God is already appearing in the lives of his people, but it does not yet appear what we shall be. We're still growing, but we still have more, more to appear in us. All right? First John chapter 3, verse 18. First John chapter 3, verse 18, number 4. My little children, let us not love in word, ne neither in tongue, but in what? In deed and in what? So now they're saying, you know what? Let's apply every practical principle to my life so that God's love is seen in my life. Because the Bible says, if you love me, do what? Keep my commandments. All right? So now, the God's love, because they, they walk in deed and in truth. That's how they're showing their love. Their love for God is increasing. It's not just lip service anymore. So now they show their love for God by changing practical things in their life, evidence that they are walking with God. Right? We so, so far say amen. Now they start doing evangelism because they're showing their love for God. Now they may change some things in their home because they're showing their love for God. Maybe they're changing some things in their life. It's deed and truth. That's how we show our love for God. Are you with me so far? And I want to emphasize truth. They're walking in the truth. They're studying the truth. They're learning the truth. Evidence that God is appearing in our lives. They even will fall in love with something called present truth. Are you with me so far? Say amen. <laughs> they want to be where the truth is. They want to study what truth is. They want to apply the truth to their life. This is evidence that God is appearing in the lives of his people. If that's good, say amen. Oh, friends, these are clear signs that God is appearing in our lives. And I pray that God will appear more and more. Because you know what? When the God said, let there be light, there was light. It just, it just appeared. When we surrender our life to Christ, Christ just appears. It, it's, not, it's not hard. Are you with me so far? It's not your works. As you behold him, he's appearing more. If that's going to say amen. And I want Christ to appear more. So that when people look at me, they see that my life is changing. Are you with me so far? Say amen. amen. They see my actions are aligning with God's word. They see that now I want to live according to God's truth. If that's your say amen. amen. All right. Number five. Another evidence that God is, is appearing in the lives of his people. Let's go back to 1 John chapter 3. We're still in here. Are you with me? All right. The Bible says in all right, 1 John chapter 3. Are you still with me? Yes. All right. Verse 5. First John chapter 3, verse 19 rather. Verse 19. So they're walking in the truth. They're walking in the ways of God. First John 3, verse 19. And now they have an assurance. They have an assurance that God is saving them. They have an assurance. They have faith in God. It's like what uh, steps of Christ. Faith and acceptance, right? They have an assurance. And in and, and verse 19 it says, And hereby we know, not guess, because you're walking in the truth. You, you're doing righteousness. Now you know, right? You know that we are of the truth. And shall assure our hearts before him. So now you're having assurance. You're trusting in God for your salvation. You're not looking to yourself. You're trusting in God that he, will, he is saving you. You're trusting in God that he's working in you. You have the assurance. And verse number 20. Oh, he's the greater assurance. For if our heart condemns us. You know, our past condemns us, right? The devil comes to remind us of old sins. If these things condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. So it says, listen, we are holding on to the blessed assurance 
And now we start living by faith and not feeling. Are you with me so far? Assurance, faith. You start living a life of faith. You're not living by feelings anymore. You're living by faith that even if it's dark, even if you can't trace God's hand, you trust his heart. Are you with me? That when the devil tells you that you can't be forgiven, or when the devil tells you that you've gone too far, or when the devil tells you that you know, you're too sinful, might as well give up. No, you have the assurance that he's appearing in me. Are you with me so far? Say amen. You're having assurance. The song, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. It becomes a living experience now because Christ is appearing in your life. You believed on Christ. You confessed your sins. You repented from your sins. You're standing on the word of God. You're claiming Bible promises. You're asking him for peace and joy in your heart. You're living by faith and not by feeling. And, and you know what? Just like how Christ needs to appear in us, but yet he's appearing more and more. We haven't seen it yet. That's what prayer and faith is too. When things you don't see, you're saying, Lord, I know it's going to appear. I'm standing on your word. It's going to appear. Are you with me so far? I'm standing on your word. The things that I need, the things I'm praying for, the things I'm claiming, they're going to appear even if I don't see it yet because you have faith in what you can do in me when it's not appearing yet. So I have faith in what you can do when it's not appearing yet. If that's clear, say amen. amen. Oh, that's beautiful. You're having trust in God now because of what he's, he has faith in you and what he can do in you. So why don't we have faith in what he can do for us? Are you with me? Say amen. Yes. You have the assurance now. You're praying with assurance. <laughs> Are you with me so far? As a matter of fact, I was going to save this for later, but let's go right into it. So let's go, let's, let's say this is number six now. This one is number six we're going to point out. All right? Prayer. First John chapter three, verse 22. Do you see that, friends? It says, and whatsoever we ask, we what? We receive of him. Stop there. That's prayer. Are you with me so far? Say amen. So, so Christ appears more in your life. <laughs> You're beholding his love. You're receiving promises. Now faith that things will appear. And now you know how to pray. Are you with me so far? You're ordering your life after his will. So when he will hear your prayer. And now you know how to pray. Are you with me so far? Say amen. See, Christ, when we, when we hear God's love and we give our heart to Christ, oh, he loves me, you know what, I, I sinned, let me confess my sin, get right with God, that's evidence that Christ has appeared in your life. Are you with me so far? That don't mean you have a prayer life yet. That don't mean you love Bible study. <laughs> Are you with me? There's still more of Christ to appear in his people. Now, once the Holy Spirit moves on your heart to say, you know what, I need to pray more, that's the Holy Spirit appearing in, in Christ, appearing in your life. Are you with me so far? When you start claiming promises saying, you know what, I'm not going to just go with trials and be sad. I'm going to sing and be happy and trust God. That's evidence that the Spirit of God, that Christ is appearing in your life. Are you to be saying amen? Oh, friends, listen, Christ is already in the lives of his people. Not fully, but he's still working in the lives of his people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen? Oh, praise God. Evidence that you're here tonight. Oh, listen, evidence that I'm even preaching something tonight is evidence that God is appearing in us tonight. Are you with me so far? But there's more to appear. Amen? Oh, there's more. There's more. All right. Woo, I'm excited. All right. Number seven. <laughs> number seven. When God appears in the lives of his people, number seven. Let's go to 1 John chapter 3, verse 10. 1 John 3, verse 10. Now, many of us don't like this, but friends, listen. You, you have to remember, Christ is going to appear more and more. And when he appears... He's going to make a distinction between the righteous and the wicked, the world and righteousness. So you're going to continue to continually separate yourself from the world. Are you with me? Say amen. First John chapter three, verse 10. It says, uh, and you know what? Look at this. It's so beautiful. In this, the children of God are manifest. So in this, the children of God are manifest. Hold your finger in first John three, verse 10. Look at verse five. Look at verse five. The Bible says, and you know that he, that's Christ was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin. Do you see that? So in verse 10 it says, we are manifested, the children of God. Verse 5 says, Christ is manifested. So I want to say that Christ is manifested in his children. If that's good, say amen. amen. Now listen, verse number 10 now says, in, the, in this the children of God are manifested and the children of the devil. It says, so you're seeing two, two contrastions, one of, the, of God, one of the devil. It says, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. So the Bible says that there's a difference, a distinction between a child of God and those that are of the devil. Do you see that? The children of God are manifested and the children of what? 
the more Christ appears in your life, listen, there's going to be a clear distinction between you and someone that does not love God. It's going to be seen. Because Christ is appearing in your life. If that's good, say amen. Now, if that has not happened yet, all that means is that Christ must appear in your life a little bit more. If that's good, say amen. Because it does not yet appear, what shall be? But the Bible says we shall be like him. We're going to be like him, friends, by God's grace. We're going to be pure as he is pure. We're going to walk with him. We're going to see his life. We're going to pattern after his life. And there's going to be a distinction between us and our friends so that our friends no longer want to walk with us unless they walk with God. If that's your say, amen, friends. Oh, friends. All right, that's number seven. Number eight. Number eight. That Christ is appearing in the lives of his people. And friends, this, this can apply right now to all Christendom, all denominations. Because the things I'm saying right now, all Christians believe this already. Oh yes, you know, we have to be righteous. And yes, we have to have a prayer life. And yes, they believe all this stuff. They believe that. And Christ is appearing in them. But what about this verse? 1 John chapter 3, verse 22. Are you with me so far? I read only part of it for a reason. Because the other part is in this verse. We're on number 8. Are you with me? It says this, 1 John, uh, on number 9, I believe. All right, 1 John chapter 3, verse 22. The Bible says, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his what? So evidence that God is appearing in your life is what? Talk to me. Commandment keeping. Commandment keeping. You start now obeying the Ten Commandments. What about the Sabbath? Is that part of the commandment? What if you're in a church that worships idols and images? And the, Bible, the commandment says, thou shalt not. Are you with me so far? Evidence that God is appearing in your life. If you're in a church like Catholicism, for instance, or any other religion that worships images and idols, now you say, you know what? Because Christ is appearing in my life, guess what? I can't do that anymore. Are you with me? Say amen. When Christ appears in our life, even the fourth commandment will be kept. Remember the Sabbath day to, to keep it holy. Six days shall you labor, do all your work. But the seventh day of the week, Saturday, the Sabbath. Are you with me so far? As Christ appears in our life, we say, you know what? I have to leave this Sunday thing alone. You know what? Even if the music is good, even if the church is so loving, and, and the Seventh-day Adventist one is it, so an apostasy, are you so far? <laughs> Listen, you will obey God's command because Christ is appearing in your life. If that's your say, amen. Yeah. See, friends, you know what? And th this, this is beautiful. You want to know why? Because I read something where someone said, you know what? Every, every Christian believes that God is love. Until you don't believe what they believe. My well, friends, listen. God is love regardless. Are you with me? I believe everybody Christ is appearing in. If they have a love for God, if they're saying something about Jesus, who do you think put that there? God or the devil? God. God just needs to appear in their life some more. If that's going to say amen. So when you do evangelism, if someone says, God bless you, praise the Lord. Praise God. Who do you think put that there? Christ is already appearing. Now they need to Christ to do some work some more. It, the Bible says, oh friends, it, oh First John chapter 2, it says, it does not yet appear what shall be. There's still more appearing to do. And they will become commandment keeping people of God the more Christ appears in their life. If that's your say amen. Oh friends. Oh friends. <laughs> I'm excited, amen. All right, last one. You want the last one? Evidence that Christ is appearing in your life is that when you receive Jesus and you're walking with him, you can't keep Jesus all, all to yourself. You can't study the Bible and keep it all to yourself. You can't read the word and experience God's blessing and keep it all to yourself. You can't receive prayer and have the prayers answered and keep that all to yourself. You can't keep it to yourself. Evidence now that you are, Christ appeared in you, is that now you're on fire doing evangelism. Amen? Look at verse number, are you with me, friends? You still with me? Yes. All right. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 3, verse number 24. Are we there, friends? Yes. All right. The Bible says, And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. So that means you're abiding in Christ, and Christ is appearing, abiding in you. Or you're appearing in Christ, and Christ now is appearing in you. Amen? And hereby we know that that he abideth with us by what? Talk to me. By the spirit that he's given to us. So evidence that we are appearing in Christ is that now you are filled with what? Talk to me. The Holy Spirit. 
And when the, the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit, they went out, they were doing what? Evangelism. When the Spirit fell upon them, they were preaching and teaching and healing. They were doing the work of God. When the Spirit of God fell on Jesus in Isaiah chapter 61, the Spirit of the Lord was upon me to sit down to my house and, and watch nothing. Is that what it says? The Spirit of the Lord was upon me and anointed me to preach the gospel. That's what the Bible says. Are you with me so far? So evidence that Christ is appearing in your life is that you are now having a desire to do evangelism. If that's good, say amen. Listen, it's not by works. It's not by trying, you know what, let me try a little harder. No, no, no. Let's spend more time with God. Let God appear more in you. And the more he appears in you, is the more you, he's going to appear before the world. You can't keep quiet because you now love to talk about God. You're trying to find ways to witness, ways to preach the gospel, ways to share the truth, whether it be social media, whether it be your neighbor, whether it be praying for somebody, whether it be trying to witness and tell someone about God, whether it be passing out tracts or something. Yet you made up some kind of flyer about the truth of God, right? You can't keep it to yourself. Are you with me so far? This is evidence that the Spirit of God is appearing in you. That Christ is appearing in you. Are you with me so far? Now friends, listen. We are all on these steps. Are you with me? If you receive the love of God, the appearing is going to be more and more and more. The Bible says in John chapter 4, that the path of the just is like what? A shining that shines what? More and more. So that light is going to shine more and more. Christ is going to appear more and more in the lives of his people the more that they walk with him. If that's clear, say amen. And friends, I don't know about you, but I want Christ appearing in me some more. Amen? Some more. Some more. So do we see evidences that Christ is already here? We see evidences. But just remember, it does not yet appear. We still are growing into the full character and the full stature of Jesus Christ. Amen? So now that we see these signs and this saw practical godliness, him appearing in the lives of his people, now we understand why the Bible says, he that had what? Begun a good work will do what? He that had what? Begun a good work will do what? Finish it. Well, finish it. That's it. If he started to appear in your life at the very beginning, he's going to appear more and more and more and more and more until the day that he comes or the day that we die. If that's clear, say amen. Oh, friends, Christ is already appearing in the lives of his people. Praise God. Did I preach fanaticism today? What, was it true? Yeah. Praise God. Bible says, by truth, by truth, and sell it not. Amen. Oh, friends, I want Christ to appear more in my life. I want Christ to appear more in your life. And all we have to do is allow him to continue to appear in our lives. Amen. Yes. Were you blessed by the message? Yes. Did you get the 10 points? Yes. All right. Praise God. Praise God. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we're so thankful for what you are doing in our lives as we give ourselves to you. We're anticipating your appearing. We can't wait for you to appear fully in our lives. We see the evidences of the things that you have already done. We see the evidences of the things that you are doing. But we can't wait, Father, until Jesus is perfectly reflected in our lives. We can't wait, dear Father. And we are praying with anticipation. We're studying our Bibles now with anticipation. We're believing every promise with anticipation. We're walking away from sin and rejecting temptation with anticipation. Even if we fall, we are practicing blessed assurance, that assurance, that confidence in God. Because what you have done for us because of your love, which we do not deserve, we are claiming that with anticipation. And we can't wait. We believe. We anticipate the time. That you will appear fully in our lives. Please, dear Father. We know, we, we see evidence you working in our lives. We see evidence you are already here. But it does not yet appear because there's more for you to do. There's more for you to do. Please continue to work in our lives. Please save us by your grace. May all of us by your grace be ready when you come. The Bible says it does not yet appear what we shall be. We shall be like you. Help us to believe that. We will be pure as you are pure. Help us to believe that. That we can and we will be like you. Help us not to doubt, not to question. Help us to believe your promise. We will be like you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We claim these promises. And we ask that you'll help us to abide by this truth and these principles that we study today. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen.